Gary Bauman. Welcome to Azara TV Christmas tutorial at azarazone.com. This month I'm going to show you how to create a custom brush stroke that will make decorating the season a snap. I'm going to show you how to make a garland. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click the download button to download the zip archive for this month, unpack the contents, and let's get ready to go. To begin making the garland, we need to start with a few pine needles. To do that, select the freehand and brush tool. Once you've chosen the freehand and brush tool, open the line gallery, choose the fall off brush, about 8 pixels in width, choose a butt cap and a miter point, and then start making pine needles facing left. This is the top of the, uh, top of the bow. And the reason why you're doing this is because when you eventually use the brush, you'll be using it from left to right, so the, uh, this branch will be oriented properly. So continue to make strokes. And once you have, a, oh, I don't know, about 14 or so, do a center stroke and then select all the uh, strokes. Then choose Arrange, Convert Line to Shape. Once you've done that, you can use the samples that I've given you in the zip file to uh, click on a shape. And then with the eyedropper tool, choose a color of green. You should uh, vary these colors. This is why I've given you a number of samples so that the uh, branch, when it's eventually grouped, will look natural. So let's continue to do that. Once you have the uh, branch colored, what you want to do is drag and drop a copy of it. And this is the way you can make a whole bunch of branches with the investment of only having made one once. And that looks like the top section of this uh, bow of this garland segment is done. What I'm going to do is select some and uh, duplicate them by drag dropping, mirroring them. And as you can see, once you have one branch done, it's very easy to uh, create several of them by varying the angle, the uh, degree of rotation, and the scale. Here I'm dupl duplicating another one. And then once you have all of these together, group them and then drag drop a copy. And I think uh, we have the bow done for this brush. What we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of embellishing. What I'm going to do is uh, in the zip file. In the zip file, there's an image of an ornament and you're going to use auto trace on it. Choose utilities bitmap trace and what you want to do is uh, set the remove noise to about 72, the minimum area to about 20, the tolerance to about 25, the accuracy to about 78, and the smoothing to about 78. What that should do when you click trace is produce an object that has about six, seven hundred shapes. You don't want too many. You know, once it's been traced, you'll notice that some shapes are unwanted, such as the background. You can, uh, let's ungroup this for a second, delete the background. And there are some edge objects that you probably want to get rid of. The white guys here. And once that's done, um, you'll notice that where there should be a gradient toward the bottom, um, there's a whole bunch of banding. So what we can do is take the uh, ellipse tool and drag a shape about that size. Use the eyedropper tool to select the color. We're going to be replacing this. Now let's choose a, uh, an elliptical fill. Click on the center and then with the eyedropper tool click the center of the object. And what we have here is an elliptical shape that will serve in this ornament to replace several of these colors that uh, are representing a banded gradient. We don't want them. So they're going to go away. So there's quite a few shapes here that we're eliminating. 
Once you have that in place, why don't you uh, select all and group them and copy it to the clipboard. Let's go back to the bow shape, uh, paste the ornament in, and if it needs scaling, scale it. Why don't you put it where I have it here on screen, toward the uh, left hand side. Now in the zip document there's also a pine cone shape that I've created exactly the same way. I took an image and auto traced it. Let's put it to the right here. And then what you want to do is uh, get rid of the color samples on the zip file if they're still there. Group this and now you're ready to create a brush with a freehand brush tool and the object selected. Click create brush and name it. And I'm going to name this a garland brush. You can name it anything you like. Fred, if you like. Now that uh, the brush has been defined, in order to use it, let's move this over here. You take the freehand brush tool, and you'll notice up on the uh, info bar, you can uh, click to uh, select the brush. Now, you're not done yet. We want to edit this a little bit. And uh, we can make this uh, smaller. Click Edit Brush, and then let's reduce the spacing. It looks as though 30% or so will get the uh, garland pieces touching each other. Now, on scaling, what we might want to do is add some randomness so that when you use the stroke, uh, the, the uh, garland itself is not the same size. If we click Random a couple times, we're good. And this garland brush is local to the current document, and that means that whenever you want the garland brush, you need to copy it to a new document. And it will appear in the line gallery under uh, Custom Strokes. So, as you can see here, just by making a couple wavy lines, um, you have a very nice garland border that you can use in your documents. And as you can see, it's right there. What I've done is uh, I've loaded an image of a tree and I'm decorating it. And you know, it's getting real close to the 25th and you should probably be decorating your tree too. And so that's it for the Zara Zone this year. You'll be seeing me next year and I wish you a very happy holiday.